Good evening. Welcome to a service of evening prayer at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Edison, New Jersey. We're glad you're here worshiping with us this evening, and we pray that you, your family, your loved ones are well. Uh, please take a uh, moment here to sign in in the comment section. Leave your name, uh, and if you like a, a brief message uh, for your fellow worshipers or for me, uh, please leave those in the comment section. And at various times throughout the service, feel free to uh, to leave a comment, uh, to share peace, uh, to share uh, that kind of good news uh, as we go along through the service. Again, our service this evening is a service of evening prayer with healing, uh, and we begin with our dialogue. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We are illumined by the brightness of his rising. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Death has no more dominion over us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the beginning you called light into being. You set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evil doers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus who you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish 
anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. But I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray to you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid, for you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And a reading from 1 Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile, you know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have a genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring Word of God, the Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory Thanks to you, O Lord. Lord. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread 
blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? In that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. We continue our praise of God uh, by joining in Mary's song, our Gospel Canticle, the Magnificat. Together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Over these last few weeks, over this last month, have you caught yourself thinking about how almost incomprehensibly small and tiny of viruses. That ubiquitous graphic that we see of novel coronavirus, the virus that is plaguing our, the people on our planet right now. Those graphics come from pictures from electron microscopes, uh, microscopes that have the power to make visible things that are so tiny and so small that it's impossible to see by any other means. We need an instrument that powerful to see a virus. And yet this virus, so tiny and invisible, has turned our lives upside down and shaken human life on this planet to its core. A little more than a month ago, we drastically changed the way we went about the business of our lives, the business of our gathering together, the way we do almost everything so that we can slow the spread of this virus. And, and now we find ourselves, a little over a month later, wondering, now what? What's next? Surely our heads are spinning with an almost inexhaustible list of questions about what our future holds. It's hard to get our bearings, and it's almost impossible to plan anything just beyond the basic essentials or on any kind of time horizon that is longer than, than say, a day or two or, or maybe a week. And so the question that still remains on all of our minds is, now what? And while the global scale of this pandemic is entirely new to us, it's un unprecedented, the feelings that we're experiencing of having our whole life shaken and not knowing what we'll do next, those feelings are familiar to us. They're the feelings of grief. And it is grief, faith-shaking, hope-crushing grief that is at the heart of this story from Luke's Gospel that we have just heard. And it is precisely what Jesus is responding to with the good news of his own resurrection. It may come as a surprise to us that Jesus' ministry does not stop with his crucifixion or with his simply rising from the dead. Jesus' ministry continues after he has been raised from the dead. And the first thing Jesus does is reveal himself to his disciples 
so that they can share in the good news of his resurrection. Without this revelation, the poor disciples would remain stuck in their grief. They would go about doing the work of mourning, of adapting, of recovery, and putting their life back together. But with this revelation, Jesus' disciples are left to do the work of grief and move on to a new normal in a completely different way. You see, the good news of Jesus' resurrection changes everything for his disciples, from the way they understand what has happened in the past to their hope for a future joy. And it changes how they move on from the trauma of Good Friday. The resurrection now becomes the new normal towards which they are moving. But that good news has to be communicated. It has to be communicated and believed. So like a shepherd goes out to gather a scattered flock back together, Jesus goes out to track down his disciples. And the story of this evening has Jesus going out to find two disciples, one named Cleopas and his friend, who are on a road on the evening of Easter, but they're traveling away from Jerusalem, away from the fellowship of Jesus and his disciples. And yet, as Jesus himself accompanies these two disciples along the road, their eyes are kept from recognizing him. Even though Jesus is walking right beside them, they do not know that it is him. He might as well have been invisible to them. Even when they stop and they look directly at him, their sadness keeps them from recognizing him in the same way that their sadness and grief has kept them from believing the good news that the women have already brought to them, that they already announced earlier this morning. That is the surprising news that the tomb is empty and that the angels had appeared saying that he was alive. All they can recognize now is their own sorrow, their own grief, and the loss of their own hopes and their dreams. Their heads are too full of their own disillusionment and doubt. They are too busy wondering what's next for them that they cannot see their master right in front of their eyes. Without faith, they cannot see what is right before their eyes. Now, we can certainly sympathize with these disciples. We of all people know what it is like when our hopes and dreams and plans for the future dissolve especially those times when they dissolve in the death of a loved one. We also know that, that for all extents and purposes within our experience, that death is final. We know the void that opens up in our hearts when we lose the one who was at the center of our life, the one that we built our lives around. And we know that part of that work of grief is going about building a new life a life where we still stay connected to that loved one, but where that loved one is no longer with us. Perhaps that is what these two sad disciples are walking off to do. To rebuild their life around something else or something new after they have lost Jesus. And yet, for these disciples, what they have lost in Jesus They've lost the faith that Jesus was the one who would redeem Israel and save the world. What these two disciples have lost is their faith in Jesus, and by losing their faith in Jesus, they have lost their faith in God. They had hoped that things would turn out differently. Perhaps they had seen it all play out much more gloriously in their mind. Jesus' triumph, the liberation of the people, the establishment of God's kingdom. That had all ended with Jesus' death, and no matter what anyone else said to them, it would never be the same. All they could do was walk away, wondering, dejected, and sad. Have you been there? Do you know what it is like to lose your faith? Have you felt that sadness of disillusionment when you thought and hoped that things 
would, would turn out just like you had imagined, only to have your whole world fall apart. At the end of his great sermon on the mount, Jesus tells the story of a person who builds their house upon the sand. When the storm comes with rain and wind and flood, the foundations of the house crumble and wash away. But Jesus promises that all who build on him in faith, by trusting in Jesus, by acting on, in faith on his teaching, that they will be like the people who build their house that is anchored on the rock. A house and its strong foundation will withstand the storms. These two disciples have built their house on shaky ground of their own imaginations and expectations. And the storm of belief has washed it away. And yet, and yet I think it is absolutely important to realize that in those times when the foundations of our life have been washed away, that our Lord does not turn away in judgment or rejection. It is here that I think it's important to notice that Jesus is very much alive and present. Not only present, but that the risen Lord has actually gone out to meet them on the road, to accompany them in their despair and their unbelief. It is important to remember that just because Jesus, just because there are times when we feel like our faith is dead, and God is far from us, Jesus is still truly present with us. And not just present, but actively and intentionally engaging us so that our faith is restored and our lives are rebuilt on a surer, stronger foundation. And that is precisely what Jesus is doing here. He goes to them on the road. He accompanies them on their journey. He listens to their story and then he slowly and deliberately helps them put the pieces back together. Jesus helps them reconstruct the story of God and God's redemption and salvation, and he builds that on the rock that is Jesus for them. And around the events that have actually happened, not the events as they wanted them to be, but as they were, that make the most of Jesus' betrayal and arrest, that see God's salvation in his crucifixion and death, and now that next part, that Jesus has risen from the dead, and that ongoing work of Jesus and his followers continues in announcing the arrival of God's kingdom. Until finally, as they sit at table with Jesus, as they must have done hundreds and hundreds of times before, they recognize their gracious and loving Lord in the fellowship that he creates for them in the breaking of the bread. You see, this is what Jesus has always done. From the beginning of his ministry, Jesus has gone out to seek out the poor in spirit, the mourning, the hungry, the humiliated, and the greedy, to, to invite them to his table, to eat with them, to welcome them into the abiding fellowship that he has brought, that is peace with God, to announce the coming of the kingdom of God, through this breaking of bread and embodied in this meal around the table, and now, after his death and resurrection, that ministry of reconciliation, forgiveness, and peace, that ministry of breaking bread and fellowship at table, continues. And in that moment, their faith is restored, and they see Jesus. Now what? Isn't it amazing that we can ask that question, out of despair, not wondering, wondering what comes next, or we can ask, now what, out of faith and joy and confidence, knowing that God is with us. When we ask that question, what's next, now what, out of despair, we cannot imagine or see a future for ourselves. But when we ask it in faith, we can see that Jesus is alive and present, and we can rejoice in the future that he has opened for us, a future that is the fulfillment of all that he has sought, said, and done for us. A future that is nothing short of an eternal life in God's kingdom. In one way or another, we are all wondering and asking what's next for us. 
The presence seems seemingly uh, uh, the, the presence of this seemingly invisible virus has cost us so much. So, so what is next for us? I believe that what's next for us is the ongoing ministry of our crucified and risen living Lord Jesus. A ministry which from its beginning and even now to this day is one that accompanies people in their grief, listens to their and shares in their stories, and helps people rebuild their lives on a deep and true foundation that is Christ for them. To invite them into the fellowship and peace that we share, a fellowship that we embody in the breaking of bread. It is that ministry that heals. It is that ministry that seeks and comforts. It's that ministry through which the Holy Spirit restores our faith. And it is the ministry of Jesus that opens the eyes of faith to see Christ is present right before our eyes. To see that Christ Jesus is truly with us. We can see him at present in all of Scripture. We can see him with us in, in this fellowship that we're sharing. We can see him with us in, in the hundreds of tables that we represent tonight and in the breaking of the bread and as we share that with each other. We can see Christ is with us in this very moment. When the whole world is wondering and asking what's next, we have this gift that we have received. The grace of God that gives us faith to see Jesus right here. And when we see Jesus with us, to see the vision of a future in a fellowship that we share with Christ around his table. Where we see this happening, where we see God's kingdom breaking in, where we see God redeeming and saving the whole world. is the gift that we can share. God's vision for our future whole and well in God's grace gathered around the table and celebrated in Jesus' name. Amen. The meal and fellowship around the table was one of the signs that Jesus used to welcome people and show that God's kingdom had arrived for them. Healing is another. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign that the reign of God had come near, and he sent his disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer and the laying on of hands and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need. Loving God, our source and our final home, we give you thanks for the gifts of life on earth, for our human bodies and all that you have created. In your great mercy, hear us, O oh God. Merciful God, by the wounds of your Son we are healed. Bring your saving help to all people. In your great mercy, hear Praise us, O oh God. Holy God, your spirit came upon us in the waters of baptism and brought us into the communion of saints. Renew in us the grace of baptism by which we share in Christ's death and resurrection. In your great mercy, hear yes, us, O so God. God. Mighty God, your Son brought healing and wholeness to all. Break your healing presence now to all who are sick or in pain. Grant hope to all who are discouraged or in despair. In your great mercy, hear us, O oh God. Compassionate God, the strength of those who suffer, bring hope and peace to all who are in mental, physical, or spiritual distress, especially those who are on our heart this evening, and for whom, promise to intercede. We 
pause now to share and to speak their names before you. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. Almighty God, source of human knowledge, give skill, wisdom, and compassion to all who provide medical care. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. Loving God, our Creator and Redeemer, give gentleness and courage to family members, friends, and caregivers of those who suffer. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. God of great and abundant mercy, with your presence sustain all for whom we pray. Drive away their suffering, give them a firm hope, and strengthen their trust in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. Those who wish may lay their hands upon their heart or upon their head or upon another part of their body for which they are desiring healing. You may also wish to reach out your hands to pray for someone that you know who is in need of healing. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace and power that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son. Living God, through the laying on of hands, grant comfort in suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We also with you. Share a sign of God's peace with one another. You may wish to uh, leave that in the comment section below. Uh, if you uh, are, are also, you might want to reach out to friends or family. Uh, send them a text message or, or other kind of instant message uh, sharing uh, the peace of the Lord that you have received uh, with them and spread that out uh, from this place and this gathering. At this time, we also worship God uh, with the gifts and offerings that we give in thanksgiving for all that God has done with us. And that we offer those up not only in praise and thanksgiving, but for the sake of the mission and ministry that we have been entrusted to carry out in Jesus' name, both in this community and around the world. If you wish, you may give your gift electronically through the St. Paul's website at www.stpauls-edison.org or also, if you wish, you can send a check or a gift into uh, St. Paul's uh, Ministry Center. Uh, you can mail it to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, 445 Old Post Road in Edison, New Jersey. Uh, and if you are giving your gift electronically, you may take a moment to just check the box at the bottom that would make this a recurring gift so that it can continue to be given uh, month in and month out. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your outpouring of support. Thank you for the way in which you continue to support this ministry, uh, ministry to this community in Jesus' name. Now let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at your table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The mind is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, if you haven't done so already, if you go to the St. Paul's website, uh, you can sign up for our email newsletter. This contains uh, all kinds of links and indications.
applications and ways to sign up for different events that are going on. Some of the things that are happening this week at St. Paul's on Wednesday afternoon at 1 o'clock is our Bible and Bagels Bible study. Uh, on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock is our Thursday evening uh, Bible study. Uh, and then every night uh, throughout the week, uh, 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 every night of the week, we gather at 9 p.m. on Zoom for our bedtime and our evening prayers. We're invited to uh, come and join us to close out your day uh, in the peace uh, that God gives, uh, commending into God's hands our life and the day that's gone before us. So I encourage you to do that. All of those links in, uh, can be found either through the St. Paul's website uh, or by signing up for that uh, newsletter. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, check in, into it and uh, please sign up for those Bible studies this week and look for other ways that we can stay together throughout the week. Now receive God's blessing. May the one who brought again, who brought forth from the dead, uh, Jesus, raise you to new life and fill you with hope and turn your mourning into dancing. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Have a great evening.